Today's guest is Kelly Edwards. She is the organizer of The Business Shower. We talk about the importance of connecting entrepreneurs with each other and to talk about her journey from becoming a talented agent to a matchmaker for different businesses and talk about her podcast, The Business Shower Events, where she highlights entrepreneurs on how they are able to get their businesses off the ground. Give a warm welcome to Ever Blessed, Kelly Edwards. I would like to apologize in advance for the muddy recording and microphone difficulties. Hi. Hi. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? I am good. <laughs> but I wanted to like first thank you so much for even joining me. I did look at some of the your your website as well as um your other previous YouTube recordings that you've had. And I've also looked at some of the podcasts. I think it's called the Business the Business Shower Podcast. Yes. So even though you you're running multiple projects, I love to see uh the journey on how you got to that point and a little bit more about you that the listeners can get to know who Kelly Edwards is. Yes. So um so tell me a bit about where you grew up. Yeah, so I grew up in Orange, New Jersey. Um, no mom, no dad, just my grandmother and grandfather and aunts. Um, they're the ones who raised me. Um, so I had a tough childhood. I mean, I was still loved because I still have my grandmother um, and my grandfather. But, you know, it's nothing like having your mom's love. I mean, so... I grew up tough with some abandonment issues and, you know, that was, that was tough. So, um, and because of the type of person my mom was, a lot of people didn't believe in some of the things that I wanted to do. It was just like, oh no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I have accomplished them all. So I just want to say that. (laughs) Yeah. I love to hear that because that's something that I have gone through I think I yeah I think it falls in in the category of, of abandonment because uh I was a latchkey kid so um she was uh, she was everywhere but home <laughs> so yes. but yeah absolutely well I'm glad that you were able to accomplish that because um I think it even it strengthens you more when you yes. have to go through these obstacles and try to figure things out as a young child, like you got so frustrated just waiting for your mom and or in your dad or your, your grandparents to, to tell you how to do things, or they, they pretty much kind of like shoot you away. Like, we don't need to hear you. Uh, you know, like it's what is called seen and not heard scenario as a child. So you learn a lot on your own just to kind of like, okay, that's it. I'm doing it on my own and I'm going to figure it out. So 14 I started working I had my first job when I was 14 yeah I wasn't you know my mother you know had her thing she had her issues that she was dealing with I mean thank God she's past it now but you know she wasn't past it before so I not only had to take care of myself but I had to figure out how to get some of the things that I wanted for myself because grandma and grandpa couldn't afford it so and then grandpa got very sick um when I was 14 so that forced my grandmother to have to stand on her own so it was it was it was tough growing up it really was Mm -hmm. yeah I am so glad that you had found a way to inspire within and become a successful strong black woman on top of that I mean we need a lot of uh I, I think I even heard from a previous podcast outside of this and they said they don't they don't reference uh POC as, as person of color they say person of culture so i love i love that analogy because that's exactly what we are we are enriched in our culture and we find ways to accomplish and to veer around the society's uh assumption of what a black woman is uh, supposed to be the statistics they're going to be with uh you know Teenage mom, you know, poverty on a welfare system, the whole yes. spiel of the the, mm-hmm. the so called stereotypical thing. Yeah, living in the projects and yeah, now <laughs> living off of other people because they don't want to, they don't feel like they want to work because they're getting more money from 
their welfare checks and their food stamps and all that. I mean, thank heaven I was able to have that as an option because I was a teen mom. So I kind of fell into that, but I crawled myself. I think uh, maybe about two years I was on the welfare system because I was like, I cannot, I can't feel comfortable living off of somebody else's back. Mm-hmm. I, I just, that that's the type of, uh, how do you say it? The morals of my understanding of life that I didn't want to be in that category. I didn't want to feel like I was, you know, leeching off of somebody's success. Yeah. I wanted to make my own success. So, so, and I think, I believe you said um, in a previous podcast that you yourself don't have children. So you yes. literally kind of broke that mold to some people's understanding that a woman, a black woman, or just a woman in general has to have that. And that, that kind of like, it becomes something that they are, they have more value in some cultures. If you don't have children, then what's wrong with you? It's it almost like it's considered a norm because you're a woman, you must use your reproductive system to create life. And some people create life outside of the reproductive system by creating a business like yourself. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That's an interesting way to look at it. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, so in my teens, pre, you know, pre before I got married, um, I made the choice not to have children because I just didn't want to be that stereotype right I wanted to do it right I wanted to get married and I wanted to have children um so me and my husband both waited till we got married to have kids and now I'm having some fertility issues so um because now I'm now I really want to have children and you know previously I'll share with everybody because I think I've shared it on my podcast before I have had multiple miscarriages um so right now I'm working with one of the top doctors down here in Middlesex County to figure out what's going on but in the same sense, you know, my two businesses are my babies along with my dog and along with my husband because he sometimes acts like a baby. Um, <laughs> exactly. but yeah, so I still have things around me that um, I can focus on and not always, you know, focus on that. So, yeah. And I mean, I've considered creating my own business. That's my baby. Like I saw it. I, I created it. I watched it grow and uh-huh. I watched it mature. And develop into a successful, strong, you know, background and foundation of a business. I mean, that's the same concept that we share in the the same idea of raising children. We want them to be strong. We want them to be resilient. We want them to be forward thinking and, you know, stand on a solid foundation and be successful. That's the same thing. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're two two women that think alike uh, on that aspect. So that's pretty cool. That is so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. I think we even kind of hit on this, the, the biggest myth, but there might be something else you'd like to share with the listeners. What's the biggest myth that you see um, that you have shared as advice over and over again in your situation, in your career path? That... This is a male dominated industry. I hear that a lot. That's a myth. <laughs> I almost feel like this is a female dominated industry. Um, so I yeah, I do I do feel like that's a myth. That's yeah. one. That's one the biggest one I can think of right now off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a I think we've played the role to be um you know, I, I might lose a lot of male listeners, but if we still love you, <laughs> yeah, we love you. We were only talking about a particular uh, category of men. Um, yes. The thought of they believing that we are recessive and we are something to control. I think we, we have so many neurons just firing of, of ways to be creative. I mean, first off, our body is the most beautiful thing and the things that it can do and create. Our mind is the same way. So um, there's some men out there that like to belittle and little do they know we have some little extra some men are in our sleeves. So today, this is our moment to shine. So absolutely. Yes. So what made you venture into the uh, 
your businesses as well as your podcasting. I believe from a previous uh, previous recording I saw on YouTube, you had started your podcasting around the pandemic. Yes, and yes. And oh. your businesses, I think you said your business was started in 2006 and you've had multiple projects. So what made you venture into those? Yeah, so I started my first business in 2006. Um, it was a business with uh, me and my ex. We didn't work out, so the business didn't work out. So we ended up shutting that company down. Um, and then the two businesses that I have now, me and my husband decided in November that we were going to look into real estate and, you know, start doing real estate investments. His family, they've always uh, used real estate as a retirement plan for them. Um, so we talked about it and we were like, okay, you know what? We should do the same thing. That's what made um, us start looking into real estate. And then he kind of backed off of it and was like, listen, this is you. This is your baby. Um, I'll help out when needed, but right now it's, I'm primarily doing most of the real estate investing. Now the podcast, the business shower podcast, it came about because I wanted to do something. And I kept seeing this meme all over the internet about instead of having, um, baby showers and, and, uh, bridal showers and support, supporting that we should celebrate businesses. So I came up with the concept to have a business shower and I had my first event, the week that New Jersey shut its doors because of COVID. Um, and I did not think anyone was going to come, but people came. They were scared, but they came. Okay. So I had some people that came to my event, which it was really good. And then like that Monday, our state was completely shut down. Um, so then I was like, okay, I have to do something to pivot. Like, what am I going to do to pivot and, you know, keep my business growing? Um, the podcast was always in my business plan. And I was just like, Hey, I just got to do it now. So that's what I did. I launched a podcast in September. It took me some time to get it up and running, but I I launched it in September and it's just been, uh, straight up, uh, up the hill battle from there. It's, it's definitely somebody told me on some interview that I listened to, if you can make it past 10 episodes, you're golden. And I'm like, I'm 25. (laughs) So yes, golden check. I did it. So I am like so excited. I have a lot of new things that I'm going to be launching as of January. So that's kind of how everything came together. Oh yeah. I didn't even know that that was considered the, like the you're in the higher percentile. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I didn't even know there was like that with podcasting. And I, yes, in my yes. best, I don't know if it's 10 or 15, but I know I passed it. I, oh, yeah. Way, it's either 10 or 15. I might be wrong, but I know it was like 10 or 15. If you did it, you you passed it. And I was just like, check mark. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Another thing off my list that I don't have to worry about. So you keep going, exactly. keep going. Exactly. Well, that's awesome. That's, that's um, pretty cool to know that. Uh, it's a, it was, a, I was at a make it or break it point at 10. So that's, that is so awesome. I am so happy for you that you're able to have such a successful podcast and, um, and your businesses as well. And this the thought of having a business shower. I mean, I think that was just a brilliant idea that you had created because like, I think even you even mentioned, everybody's, you know, has done those baby showers and you've never had the, the, you know, the honor, the privilege of having that in your life with, you know, at the time when you had that podcast recorded, you identified that you didn't have that in your life as of yet, but why not celebrate something else that goes on? Like the percentage of people starting businesses has probably skyrocketed since the pandemic has started so you are like ahead of the curve girl I Mm -hmm. mean that is amazing amazing and I'm so proud of all the new business owners out there I'm so proud of you because uh, I say it all the time you do not want to rely on one stream of income um you want to have your own thing and you want to build generational wealth so this is how you do it y'all Yes, ma'am. That's that's so true. I mean, right now I have four jobs. So I, when you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, another mark check mark on my on my list because I'm so ahead of that. And 
So, yeah, like you said, it is so true, especially with the, um, you can never put all your potential and opportunities in one basket. You have to keep your mind flexible and constantly reevaluating your situation, your finances, depending on your circumstances of your lifestyle um, and the situation that has been going on for almost two years now. So just the thought of having not having that type of plan, you're bound to fail. And we don't want that to happen. Absolutely. So now can you tell me exactly what living person other than family members do you most admire? I mean, it could be from someone who gave you good advice with your business or with your personal life or just some random stranger who had just said something that was just, it really, it really clicked with you. I'm going to say it's going to have to be my, uh, my current boss. Um, she is, she started from the bottom. Now she's here. <laughs> That's all I can say. And every day, like, you know, she's very supportive of, you know, all of us having businesses and different things like that. So, um, and this is the first uh, employer that I have worked for that had this level of, okay, you have a business. Do you need help with your business? Do you, do, I could connect you with this person. I can, that's the type of person she is. So I'm going to say her uh, would be one person. And I'm, I guess I would always, I can also say my cousin Tamara, she doesn't have any businesses, but I just admire her. You know, I'm going to, if I fall down, I'm going to get up type of attitude. So, and that's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of adopting that sometimes when I fall, I kind of stay down for a little while, but, um, I'm, I'm learning how to bounce back pretty fast. So those two people would be people that I admire. That's wonderful. Awesome. Yeah, because I know I think, you know, even though you might feel like it's uh you get down, but that's that's the point where you actually just reevaluate, recover, and build up your strength to come back. It doesn't yes. matter how long it's gonna be, as long as you come back. Yes. You know, don't stay down. Don't exactly. ever stay down. You yes. know. So that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Now I know I know one of the other questions that I had. I had asked, um, I did not know the background thoroughly about your, um, but I guess maybe futuristically, if this is a question in regards to children. So um, once that does come around and you become, uh, you, you're able to be gifted uh, with the miracle of having children either from you or, I mean, there's so many other children out there that are needing a loving mother and a father you know, who would be responsible for inculcating traditional values among your children in the future? And um, I mean, that's something that based on our, the people of culture, we want to make sure that um, we provide traditional values amongst our children, or even just people who are, even children who are not, um, like my aunt, my aunt didn't have any children, but she was a church school um what do you call it bible studies for children um, yeah bible so she had multiple spiritual children that always called her mom or, or mom mom binky and um unfortunately she passed away a couple of years ago but uh yeah it was very sudden but she herself had so many children it's just like a like a little rhyme um she had many children she didn't know what to do kind of scenario so it's going to be joint it's going to be me primarily, I'm going to say, um, and then it's going to be the community. And when I say the community, I mean the people around me, um, because I am not the only person that has a business, um, that is surrounded, uh, around me. I have friends that also have businesses and they have different types of businesses. So I want to expose my children to that. That's what I want to expose them to. And then also uh, having a business is not for everyone. So um, I also want to expose them to if maybe not having a business is for you. There's other things that you can do. So my kids, I hope they are ready <laughs> because the lessons and the things that they're going to learn, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm probably going to be a very tough 
parent, but I'm not going to be tough where they hate me, but I'm going to be tough. I'm definitely going to be tough. Yes. Yeah. You're going to be stern, but it's, it's a stern love. It's yes. That's, that's the word I was looking for. Stern love. Yes. Yes. You need to have, uh, especially with, I mean, just coming into this world with extra melanin in our skin, it just automatically becomes like we are already fighting out of the womb scenario. But when a mother and a father can provide the proper armor and resources and tools to survive, yes, you made them a better person for themselves to survive and to become like, like out of this world. And I know it, if we could talk to your kids in the future, like, Ooh. man, they're gonna um, be like, mom was, she was a strong woman, but she, <laughs> you know, and that's what they're gonna say. I can hear it now. Like, Jesus, mom, like, I don't, I don't wanna own real estate. Yes, you do. <laughs> you just don't know it yet, but I'm, t- I'm trying to k- keep you ahead of the curve because, uh, because exactly. I'm not playing that game. I know exactly how to play this, play this life. You've been doing it for quite some time. So they so Yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing that personal side of, of uh, questions for the listeners, as well as myself. We get to know a little bit more about Kelly. and But I also wanted to talk more specifically, because I know we want to hit on some of the topics that I just mentioned. And you want to talk about the importance of connecting with entrepreneurs and with others and to talk about your journey from becoming a talent agent to a matchmaker and um man oh my gosh just like let's dive deep into what you like to share with me and the listeners about exactly do you want to go ahead and get started on that yes so yes talent management how did I get into that um We started out as marketing and promotions, um, like a street team type of thing. Um, And I have been doing that type of stuff since high school because I was a part of a high school street team that threw parties and, you know, all that stuff. So that's where it started from when I was in high school, because that was like another side hustle of mine. Um, I I told you I started early. So I did that. I was a part of this uh, street team from high school into college. And then that's how I met the artist that I was working for. And, you know, I was doing a lot of stuff for this artist and it felt like I was his manager, but I wasn't being called his manager. So um, I decided to just step up and say, listen, this is, I started this company. I'm already managing you. This is what I'm doing. Um, and that's kind of how that happened. And then from there, I started to get other people that wanted me to help them out. So that's how that, that all started. I was scouting for talent and then I was actually having talent come to me saying, Kelly, I want your help. So, um, that's how it all started. And it just got really tough, um, when him and I broke up or whatever and he wanted this and he wanted that so it was just like take it by let's just shut it down and call it a day um which is what we did and then how I got into real estate like I said we had that conversation because you know my husband was like yeah you know when I went to college I couldn't get financially and I was like why he was like because my mom and my dad together they own like two million dollars worth of property and I'm like what okay so what am I doing wrong so I started researching real estate more real estate has always been a passion of mine and um I started researching it more and I was just like I can do this I can do this okay all right and you know I got a coach and I got a mentor and then boom January 2020 my job of 13 years called me in the office and was like your last day is February, I think it was like February 20 something. And I'm like, okay, no problem. That's my last day. Thank you very much. I didn't say it like that. It was a little bit, (laughs) a little bit aggressive, very colored. Um, so at that point, you know, I, I text my mentor in tears and I was just like, I just got laid off. He's like, congratulations. You're going to now you could focus on real estate. And I was like, okay, focused on real estate. About three weeks later, I got my first deal. I made $10,000 on that first deal. So I was just like, 
okay, this is this is great. I can I can do this, you know, like I can do this. And you know, that's kind of where it's been going since then. Like I I can do this. I decided to turn back to work because health reasons. I don't have health insurance. It's cheaper to work with health insurance. So I was just like, you know, I'll work. And I got blessed with a CEO that's like, you have two businesses? That is amazing. And, uh, you know, it was just like one of those situations. So, yes. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Girl, you're you're getting it. If I could, I don't know if you can hear me, but you are getting it. <laughs> you are so getting it, girl. I am so happy to hear that. I love to hear these stories because it's like, it's so inspiring for myself. It just kind of gives me that extra push of like, my gosh, I, I have to keep going. I have to mm-hmm. keep going. Yeah. I feel like you've just, you're just out of energy, out of breath and out of ideas. But here comes Kelly Edwards. Just be like sparking <laughs> up that, sparking up some more ideas. Like, man, you know what? I haven't even tried that. Let me try that out. So yes. yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. Also, I, I think you also wanted to talk about highlight, how you highlight entrepreneurs, um, through your uh, business shower events. So yeah. um, like, can you kind of give me like a cliff note exactly how that, how that works? What's like, um, I don't, we, don't, we don't want to hear all about the magic that you do. You know, we don't want to give everybody the full recipe of what you do, but kind of give us little tidbits on what would be a prospective client? Um, what would be the things that you do for them? Yeah, so what I what I did at my, my first event was, it was almost seminar slash pop-up shop, right? I wanted to teach them and then also give them the opportunity to promote themselves and network. So, you know, I bought two people out that was able to teach them something about taxes. Someone came out, taught them about uh, marketing. And then on top, on top of that, you know, they got to mix and mingle with other business owners. So, Hey, listen, you have this product. I have this product. Let's, you know, work together. Or I have a website and I, you know, promote products on my website. Maybe I can take your product and put it on my website. So that's where, um, that door open. And for the podcast, it's given them a platform to tell their story. So how did you get started? What tips and tricks did you use to get started? Right. And I've had all types of business owners on my podcast from actors to book uh, authors to, you know, traditional clothing designers to jewelry designers. I've had everything, you name it. I've had them on my podcast. So any type of business that you want to pursue, listen to that episode. You may get inspired or you may learn something that you didn't hear um, or you don't you haven't learned in your previous and your research on your company or on your industry, you know? Yeah. So I think we're on the same wavelength in in the in the podcast here, because I think that's her goal. And I mean, listeners, if you haven't heard it from me, you can definitely hear it from Kelly and vice versa. So, I mean, I'm here to lift you up. And I mean, that's what it's all about. We've talked about your wonderful business and your awesome podcast. Now, can you tell the listeners exactly how they're able to reach out to you and listen to you and learn more? Yes. So you can reach out to me on our website at www.thebusinessshowerevents.com. Um, on there, you'll find the link to the podcast. But if you want to just look up the podcast, you can go to the Business Shower podcast. It's on Apple. It's on Spotify. Um, it's on Google Podcasts. It's pretty much everywhere. So you can just um, put that in the search engine. And then my personal email address, if you guys have any questions, is kelly at thebusinessshowerevents.com. Wonderful. And I'll put those in the in the show notes for the listeners so they can actually have easier access to get to it and and don't hesitate to connect with you as soon as they get done listening to this podcast. Now, in closing, did you have anything that you'd like to share that we didn't um, cut? We didn't go through and that you'd like to share with the listeners? Other than just, you know, keep watching the journey, guys. I'm releasing a lot of good things uh, in January. So 
you know, just keep watching. And thank you so much for having me on this podcast. This was so fun. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm glad that you were enjoying this because, I mean, this is like super exciting to actually have another person who's kind of in the same journey. Like, you know, and that's exactly what my goal is. You know, if it's um, it's been a pleasure. It's been an awesome pleasure. Take care. Right. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Noise Palooza Zion podcast. And if you enjoy listening to my podcast, please don't hesitate to give me a five-star rating on Apple or Spotify. Also wanted to give a shout out and thank you so much to all my guests, past, present, and future. And stay tuned for the next upcoming episode on Fridays.